There's a little village called Bram about a kilometer and a half away. So I think we're gonna go take our bikes and go for a little cycle ride and see what the village has to offer. We are running a little bit low on fresh food. Um, so we could do with some lettuce and tomatoes and some fruit. And so, yeah, we'll check it out, see what there is to see, get a bit of exercise and then settle in for our evening. I've lost Nick already. <laughs> we are like in the most beautiful area. I can't even describe it to you. The cameras won't do it justice. It doesn't matter what we do, the cameras will not do it justice. We are in beautiful countryside. Okay, there's trucks going past, so it could be more serene, but no. Happy? Yes. It's lovely, isn't it? Yeah, it just becomes more and more picturesque. I mean, there's a monastery on the top of that hill over there. Yeah. You can just see, you know, there's mountains in the background. I mean, Christ. It... Come on, let's go and cycle to this village. in the medieval part of the town of Bram. Bram. Bram, as in Stoker, as in rather than all. <laughs> Bram. And there's a big medieval church here. There's also a castle. And this is a circular Yeah, it's a, town. It's a circular city. It's kind of very small though. Yeah. Probably a hundred meters across. Regional supermarket. This is a speciality of the region, apparently. Oh, really? What is it? It's a peanut brittle case filled with <laughs> strawberry ice cream. Yeah. Oh, ice cream? Yes. She said, you've got to eat it immediately. She got us, that's what she said, it's in the freezer cabinet. Ah, okay. All right, we can eat it immediately. Oh, it's quite hard. Oh, hang on. This is not easy to do one hand. Oh. Yeah. Just one bite. <laughs> Just bite into it. All right. Off you go. Uh, uh, um, uh, State of view. Are you representing Australia overseas? <laughs> uh, mm. Good stuff going through this. Yeah, there's almonds, there's cream, there's ice cream, honeycomb, and peanut butter. Brittle. You bastard. How dare you? Ooh, there's like cake or something down the bottom. <laughs> Probably have to pay to go in, wouldn't we? Yeah. Well, what I was about to say is if you look to these French villages, a lot of French towns are just about abandoned and there's obviously not a lot that goes on. And the same as a lot of English and I suppose American towns as well and Australian towns. But there's always a bakery and always a butcher. Mm. Always. Always. Good morning, it is, ooh, it is 10 o'clock. It is a thundery day, Teresa's waving at me. A thundery old day. A thundery day means that a lot of the uh, tourist boats, the uh, hire boats won't move today. They'll be like, oh, we're gonna go and see the village, which is nice because I don't wanna sail in the rain, which means hopefully less disruption. I went into the office 
of the hire boat company yesterday to buy a couple of fenders and happened to look at the um, brochure for the uh, company. It said quite clearly you need no license to operate our boats and that is patently clear. The, I, I have yet, the only time I ever saw more insane boat handling was going into Charleston um, at five in the morning when the sports fleet were coming out 30 knots. So um, yeah, I'm pretty glad, hopefully, can't see any boats behind us, which means we'll get into lock on our own, which means we'll be locked in, which means that we basically make half an hour on the boat behind us. And so hopefully we'll have a nice clear day, but fingers crossed, eh? Good morning, everybody. It is a, it is a gray and, it is a gray and damp day on the Canal du Midi. Would you like to say something, Mick? Cause you seem to be feeling left out. No? Yeah, it's all very well and good for our skipper here who can just stay underneath the bimini, but I, and here's yeah. another here's another look, I have to get out and actually be in the rain uh, when we go through the locks. So anyway, here's another lock right here. I think we're going through quite a few locks today. Is that open or closed? Or opening? Just open as we... Okay. Alright, right, you're going to have to set me off then. Are you just going to come into the bank rather than the pontoon? Yep. Three. We've come to a stop. Are you ground? All right. Okay. All right, so this is our uh, method. Nick drops me off and I <laughs> jump off the boat <laughs> with varying levels of success, although I've not fallen in the water yet. And then I walk, I uh, either power walk, but sometimes I even break into a jog up to the lock. All right, I need to go around the other side of this one, so I'll have a little run. This is my morning exercise. Today's plan is to get to a town that I really, for some reason, have a block about pronouncing it, about pronouncing Castanodary. Nick, how do we say the name of the place that we're going to? Castanod, Castanodary, Cast something like that. And it is the home of Castile, which is um, the bean and I think pork and possibly sometimes duck kind of casserole. We had Casselet for the first time in Carcassonne but I think Carcassonne have kind of like taken over the Casselet mantle because they're quite touristy. But Castanodary 
has um, it is actually the home of Castle. We are aiming for there today. It's going to take us, I think, about five or six hours, which is a nice length of time. And the rain has stopped, and I think, I hope, that that's it for the rain today because we did look at the radar, and the radar showed that there, there was a band of rain kind of moving behind us, and the further kind of down the canals we went, the further away from it we got. That being said, I can still hear thunder, so yeah, don't know. Anyway, still very pleasant. Oh, here's another lock. <laughs> Can't get away from them. Okay. I just saw either a beaver or the biggest rat I've ever seen in my life. And it was up a little creek. It was, it was too big to be a rat. It had a big fat head as well. Got it, babe? Oh, no, see what's done. That actually was a thing. What happened was a drop of rain landed on the uh, on the iPad as I showed a bit and changed the picture. No, but I know. I saw that like as you turned the iPad towards him, it was the actual document, and then it just flashed to my face. <laughs> Scoffing a load of muscles. That's the first time we've been asked for. Was that your seventy? No, the vignette, which is uh, the, the permit to go through the canals. The permit, yeah. As he turned the iPad around to show the Ecclesia, um, this picture popped up. And yeah, probably like my favourite photo of myself, actually. I thought we said that the rain was stopping, because that is not what I see in front of me right now. There's a lot of sand in the rain, as we can see. Yeah. Yeah, there sure is. Well, it's 10 past 12 and uh, we've just stopped for lunch and usually we like to kind of time things so that we aren't right in front of a lock at lunchtime so that we can keep going. But today I think we're quite happy to stop, aren't we Nick? Yes. We've uh, come inside, we've taken all our damp clothes off, we have put the heating on. Nick's just told me we have how many locks this afternoon? I reckon 10. Like, I did not realise that today was so lock heavy, although I probably yeah. should expect it by now. It's a big old day. Anyway, it's still raining. We keep on saying, the rain should stop any minute now. And Nick's like obsessing over the radar and telling me that the rain's definitely passing behind us. It's definitely not going to come over the top of us. But um, yeah, it's been raining all morning. We'll see, hopefully this afternoon won't be quite as damp as this morning, but if it is, it is. I'm already wet, so it doesn't really make much difference to me, to be honest. Yeah, me too. The boat is already filthy on the outside, um, so yeah, she's going to need a good scrub. Alright, well the rain has stopped. The sun has been trying to come out. I do see a little bit of blue sky. The other thing is we've, had, we've seen no other boats today. Yeah, that is one major advantage of going out on a rainy cold day. There's no other, like not a single other boat, which is great. But yeah, I think we have something like five single locks in a row less than a kilometer apart from each other we've just gone through two and then a triple lock a double lock and then to get into the actual town we have to go through a four lock staircase so that should be fun but tomorrow we start going down we reach the summit tomorrow really yes ah, that is exciting yeah tomorrow we start going down that makes me very happy We're just waiting for the lock to open. There's a boat in there at the moment, so this is my job. I I hold the boat, hopefully in place. And we keep the uh, the boat out. We keep the rudders away from the bank. Yeah. So the nose is is pulled in, and the stern is jutting out. Something magical, turning the 
nobody knows. We have one more quadruple lock. And then we're done for the day. And at some point I'm going to be able to pronounce that correctly. Yeah, here we are tied up on the uh, key, the main key, the port key, right in front of the office, which is just behind me. And uh, we've got electricity, we've got water, and we... <sighs> I think we deserve a long shower. Our boat definitely deserves a good scrub. And it's 20 to 5, and as soon as those two things are done, we are going out for a beer, possibly a glass of wine. Almost certainly a castellet of some kind. So this is our dinner and Castellori is the home of Castellet. So we of course hunted down Castellet in Castellori. Am I saying that right? Yes. And I have the I have the pork confit and Nick has the duck confit. So really it's just sausage and beans. It's, or it, duck and beans. But it's far tastier than it looks or yeah. sounds. So it's it's beans, white beans with like confit meat, like either pork or duck or I'm not quite sure what else, but there's always sausage from what I can tell. It's the home of Castellet and yeah. this is we went to the internet to find out. Yeah. Although as I said before, most French restaurants seem to be stuck in about 1991 mm. with their decor, but the food is excellent. So good. And so this is our one night in Castel Audrey. Mm. And everyone's been very kind. Fortunately. Hot showers. I mean we would stay longer, but we've been told that, that, we've been told that we have to go because all it's, the high boats can start tomorrow, and they want the they want the berth back. Yeah, yeah they want the dock free tomorrow, yeah. so we have to leave tomorrow. Otherwise, we probably stay for another day, but we can't. For thirteen euros a night, for those of you who are interested in such things. Ooh, and then they lost my sausage. You don't want to do that, babe. We ordered the Il Flotante for dessert, <laughs> and um, it's a very typical French dessert, and I feel like I needed to discuss it with you. So it's a meringue. Marshmallow. Marshmallow. It's marshmallow, close to custard. It's a meringue. Floating in, in like a, a liquid custard, really. It's very custardy. That's what a custard based dessert normally is going to be, babe. Oh, that's a bit of what I was expecting. How's your dinner? Delicious. I have over, overdone it. <laughs> Considerably, as always. I feel like I need to discuss with everyone the uneven haircut. Wait, where's the toughest side? No. Turn your head towards this hand a little bit. Uh, no, back towards me. Okay. <laughs> what are you laughing at? It needs to be like somehow tamed, but it's just, it won't go down. <laughs> <laughs> 